TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcasting to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israeli and U.S. officials discuss Plan B for Iran's nuclear program if diplomacy fails. Retired Brigadier General Relik Shafir, one of the Israeli Air Force pilots who bombed the Iraqi nuclear reactor in 1981, tells TV7 that Israel has the capability to severely damage Iran's nuclear program. King Abdullah II of Jordan highlights his kingdom's role as the custodian of holy places in Jerusalem. Israel is capable of severely damaging Iran's nuclear installations, yet it must remain sober of the consequences. Retired Brigadier General Relik Shafir, who was one of the eight Israeli Air Force pilots who bombed the nuclear reactor in Iraq on June 7, 1981, told TV7 in a one-on-one -on -one Watchman talk conversation with Amir Oren that while the Islamic Republic has deliberately constructed its nuclear installation in a way that aims to frustrate foreign attacks, if the political leadership in Jerusalem demands of its air force to neutralize Iran's nuclear capabilities, it can be done. Um, I think the Iranians have uh, planned their nuclear program in such a manner that it would take weeks, probably, of uh, intensive warfare to neutralize their capabilities for a long time. Um, it would take uh, uh, air superiority and would take bombing off well dug uh, sites that are spread all over Iran uh, to make the blow such that it was irrecoverable. We should think of it that way, that uh, as far as the Air Force is concerned, um, the target, if it is uh, important enough to take out, um, then the, the Air Force knows how to channel its uh, energy towards that particular mission. So I would, I would say, yes, it's doable, a lot of damage, uh, with a price that we have to be ready to pay. General Shafir went on to voice caution that such an attack as part of a worst-case scenario would come at a heavy price, including roughly one quarter of Air Force crew members executing the offensive operation. At least, yes. At least one quarter. I would think so, yes. We should look at a worst analysis case, <clears throat> and a worst analysis case would lead the thought of whether it's worthwhile or not. Um, you know, in the last few years, we're not ready, to, we're not really paying a high price for our security. Uh, but when you're thinking strategic, remember the Second World War and the casualties then, 12 o'clock high, the movie, you know, et cetera. 40,000 uh, air crew over Europe, more than the ground troops. Yes. Um, and uh, we, we should understand that this may be the price and we should be able to pay this. It is important to note that the Israeli and U.S. officials reportedly held a meeting last week during which a so-called Plan B was discussed in the event that the diplomatic efforts to bring Iran back into compliance with the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action, or JCPOA, fails to yield desired results. Meanwhile, on the sidelines of the UN General Assembly in New York, European Union Foreign Policy Chief Joseph Borrell held a meeting with Iranian Foreign Minister Hussein Amir Abdullahian, during which the European institution's diplomat conveyed the urgency for Iran to return to the negotiating table in Vienna. According to an EU statement, the Iranian Foreign Ministry assured us of the willingness to resume negotiations at an early date. In related news, King Salman Abdulaziz El Saud of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia highlighted his support for international efforts aiming at preventing Iran from having nuclear weapons. In a pre-recorded statement broadcast to the UN General Assembly, the Saudi monarch further underscored that he is keen to see relations with the Islamic Republic of Iran improve, yet stressed the need for the Ayatollah regime to abandon its support for terrorist organizations and sectarian militias, which have wreaked havoc throughout the Middle East 
and beyond. Iran is a country, and we are going to add the first conversations with the Taj Mahmousa to build trust and build trust in the future of the country in the relationship. تعاون مبني على الالتزام بمبادئ وقرارات الشرعية الدولية واحترام السيادة وعدم التدخل في الشؤون الداخلية ووقف فيها جميع أشكال الدعم للجماعات الإرهابية والميليشيات الطائفية التي لم تجلب إلا الحرب والدمار والمعاناة لجميع شعوب المنطقة King Salman went on to stress his kingdom's adherence to international law, yet further asserted that Saudi Arabia's military offensive in Yemen, from which Iranian-backed Houthi tribesmen have perpetrated numerous cross-border attacks, is a legitimate right of self-defense. <laughs> وتؤكد على عدم التدخل في شؤون الدول الداخلية وتحتفظ المملكة بحقها الشرعي في الدفاع عن نفسها في مواجهة ما تتعرض له من الهجمات بالصواريخ الباليستية والطائرات المسيرة والقوارب المفخخة وترفض بشكل قاطع أي محاولات للتدخل في شؤونها الداخلية also addressing the General Assembly, King Abdullah II of Jordan proclaimed that the recent conflict in the Hamas-controlled Gaza Strip indicated a clear need of supporting the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestinian refugees after a series of scandals, including corruption that led to the removal of its leadership, alongside a blatant refusal to implement much-needed reform, had left the agency wanting for funds that fuel its operations throughout the Middle East. The bitter war on Gaza this past year was a reminder that the current situation is simply unsustainable. And the suffering we continue to see points us once more to the critical need to keep supporting UNRWA as it continues to fulfill its UN mandate and provide vital humanitarian services to 5.7 million vulnerable Palestinian refugees. King Abdullah went on to underscore his kingdom's role as the custodian of the Islamic shrines in the city of Jerusalem. Jerusalem is at the heart of this peace. Billions of people around the world hold this holy city dear. For our part, Jordan will continue working to preserve the historic and legal status quo of Jerusalem and its Islamic and Christian holy sites under Hashemite custodianship. I believe Jerusalem's holiness to Muslims, Christians, and Jews can and must bring us together. With international help, the holy city can be not a cause of division, but a symbol of unity for all to see. The Jordanian monarch further voiced alarm over the dire situation in Lebanon, which may consequently impact the entire region. Desperate living conditions are looming for millions, family tables without food, homes losing electricity and water, workplaces unable to operate. In this time of great need, we owe the Lebanese people our full support to enable them to rise from this crisis. And that demands a well-planned, well-executed international response engaging all of us. And the world must not forget the millions of refugees in host countries like Lebanon. King Abdullah's concern for Lebanon comes despite the fact that earlier this week, the Lebanese parliament granted a new Beirut government a vote of confidence for a policy program that aims to remedy the devastating economic crisis. The new Lebanese government was appointed less than two weeks ago. However, Lebanon's new prime minister merely offered hope that the dire situation in his country would improve.
وآمل أنه نقدر ننهض بهالحكومة بآمل أنه نقدر نوصل للي بيشتهي الناس ونقدر نرجع على القليلة نوقف الانهيار اللي حاصل ونرجع كل يتنا سوا بيد وحدة نقدر رجع لبنان لعزه ولا ازدهاره بإذن الله The new Lebanese government must now advance with much needed reform that would aim to tackle deep-rooted institutional corruption. Only then would the World Bank and International Monetary Fund agree to help Lebanon re-emerge out of its debts. However, with natural resistance from powerful political factions in the country, including Hezbollah, securing a so-called bailout is expected to require international assistance. Thank you for joining us. As part of TV7 Israel's prayer initiative, I would like to encourage you today to join the team and me here in Jerusalem to lift up Finland in prayer for its salvation and peace, alongside prayers for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, in addition to our ongoing prayers for the peace of Jerusalem and the salvation of Israel. I'm Yayu Pinto, wishing you a Chag Sukkot Sameach Shabbat Shalom. Tomorrow, Jonathan Hassing will be back for a TV7 Jerusalem Studio special, and TV7 Israel News will once again resume on Monday at the same time.